You are listening to Fika with Vicky on United Public Radio, 107.7 and 105.3 from New Orleans. Hello, everyone, and welcome to FICA. Our returning guest today is author John Kachuba. We talked to John about his fictional works, Dark Entry, Haycorn Smith, and the Castle Ghost, and The Bottle Conjurer on earlier episodes, and I recommend all of them. But I also found out that John is a little free library steward. And since I am too, it gave us a point of connection. And that point of connection gave me a great excuse to him invite him back between books to talk about some little free library facts and share our own experiences, reasons, and hints concerning them. And... <laughs> to sneak in to finding out if there's any news on book two of the bottle conjurer and what else may he may be up to thanks for having a little free library john for sending me a copy of and the sun's the light's going to be difficult haycorn smith and the castle ghost to put into mine stopping by today it's always a pleasure and welcome to fika thank you vicky it's great to be back again and you're welcome i'm glad you like the book Oh, I love, I'm waiting. <laughs> I'm waiting on book two, trying right. to be patient, you know, and, and adult like in everything. But um, no, I, I love ghost stories. And whether fictional or non fictional, you do them well. So you're my, you're my ghost story friend. I'm a ghost guy. <laughs> I'm your go to ghost guy. <laughs> Yes, you're my ghost guy. Um, I, I think we should start off a little bit about talking about the movement itself, Little Free Library. I just took the quote off of the website, their website, littlefreelibrary.org, to get it right. So, quoting, Little Free Library is a nonprofit organization based in St. Paul, Minnesota. Our mission is to be a catalyst for building community inspiring readers, and expanding book access for all through a global network of volunteer-led Little Free Library book exchanges boxes. And so, John, why did you start a Little Free Library? <laughs> well, you know, it had a lot to do with the neighborhood that my wife and I moved into. We live in Cincinnati, and um, we've been in this neighborhood now 16 years. When we moved in, um, we were the only white family for maybe 20 blocks. You know, it was an African-American community, um, which it still is primarily, probably 90%. Um, and it's mixed, you know, economically it's mixed. So a lot of the folks that live in this community don't have the economic resources that, you know, Mary and I are blessed to have or whatever. Um, and there's kids, you know, I see a lot of kids in the street and all this, and I've always been, a proponent, obviously, of literacy, uh, you know, especially from an early, early age, like my parents did with me. So we thought, well, you know, what if we did something like this, where we were able to get books into the hands of kids who may not have access to them other than when they're in school, which they turn in at the end of the day, but not having anything of their own that they can keep, they can read, that they can, you know, cherish or whatever. Um, so we decided to do this. And, uh, the nice thing about the Little Free Library is we we bought our actual physical library through them. So it's it's a nice little box, you know, it's on a post. And I mean, you buy all the parts uh, and then you install it. And so there's some outlay of cash involved on your part. But you don't even have to use their things. You can just set up a library of your own, any kind you want. It could be hopefully not a cardboard box. Hopefully something a little <laughs> yeah, something that keeps the books dry and safe yeah. and warm. Dry and, and safe and warm, and uh, you know, uh, kind of interesting to look at um, to attract people's attention. And you can just say to the little free library, "I've got this thing set up. Uh, I want to be a steward," and they will send you a little little plaque that you can put on your thing that says "Little Free Library" and all that. And they'll give you sort of their. They don't really have rules but they'll tell you kind of what their mission is and, and what they try to do. And so we routinely 
check the box. I just checked earlier this morning um, to see, you know, is anything moving? Um, you know, it, and we rotate books out. Something sits there for a month or something. I'll go, well, maybe I'll move this one out and put something in. Meanwhile, I've got stacks of books in the house that people have been giving me for the library. But the library's only got so much room. You know? yeah. So uh, I've got a library in the house and a library out in the street. Uh, but, it, you know, it's, um, it's really fun to watch when people come by. Uh, sometimes I'll be on the, sitting on the front porch or something, and they may not see me, and I'll see a car pull up or somebody walk up to it. And they stop and they browse and they take books out and they're looking through it. And, you know, especially with little kids, um, they put them away and I'll go in there next day and I'll find sometimes books that I didn't put in because the idea is supposed to be take one, leave one. But it's more like in our case, it's more like, you know, take one or two or a couple and maybe leave something because as I said, in this neighborhood I don't expect so much for people to be leaving books as much as just taking them. And that's fine. No, it's, it's absolutely about what people can do. Sometimes I'll go out and there'll be four missing. Sometimes I'll go out and they'll be almost all missing. Sometimes I'll go out and it'll be overstacked with people donating. Um, the yeah. neighborhood's been really great at donating. We live at, at the end of the street, um, there's a college up around the corner. So we have a vi very diverse street and neighborhood. And I will find books in languages I'm not sure what they are or something from India that's supposed to be a bestseller there. And I'm like, okay, I'm just going to borrow this one for a little while to see who this is and why they're so popular. So right. it 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 is just an amazing source of knowledge over what is popular and what's going with certain ages mm -hmm. and things there's um so if you go to the free library or little free library website as you as you know there's a map that you can log on to and you can put in like an address a zip code or something uh and it will pop up on this map and you can actually click on it and find out the street address and everything else and who runs it and the map is international i mean this isn't just the united states there's little free libraries all around the world. Uh, and it's really kind of just interesting to look and, and see where they are. Um, but we have some within like a mile of our house. There's a school not too far from us. There's a little free library right out in front of the school. There's another person that's got one maybe four blocks away from us. And I didn't even know those two existed until I put up ours. And then I went on the map and I said, well, I'll be darned. I walk my dog. <laughs> I went to school every day and never saw it. <laughs> you know? Well, that's it. And it is, it is um, as you know, I went rogue with mine and we just <laughs> put up. What we did is there's these little electric fireplaces out there about this big. And you can fit like one shelf in there. And I saw on, on Pinterest. And honestly, they're amazing because they're metal. They keep all the moisture out. They keep, it has a glass door and you just open it. So we started with one. I wanted to be all organized, but my husband just said, no, it's going out, you know. And uh, <laughs> so that went one and it was really popular. So we put out two. And now that's our long, long um, stretch of fence in front of the sidewalk. So I'm envisioning, you know, additions over time because I'm quite into this, but did register it. So I will be on that map soon. Well, and now as you register, you'll get the newsletter and it's an, it's an e-newsletter comes in your email. But um, when you look at that, they will highlight little free libraries in different locations. And some of them are amazingly creative. I mean, they're really incredible. I saw one that was uh, built inside a tree on somebody's property. It was a big tree, like an oak or something. And they had literally hollowed out the, the thing and had a glass door in it. And it's, it's in a tree, you know? Uh, and some of them are just are fantastic. Or the home, the little houses will have additions so they look like a train or, they, you know, whatever it might be. But it's just, it's fascinating to watch what, what people do and how creative they get. And of course, that attracts attention when you see something. Well, right. Like, you know. 
but that's well i thought about because i had been looking on the little library facebook page and <laughs> as well as Pinterest, <laughs> and because ours is at a bus stop which is why i put there i thought oh i can make a bus but that just seemed <laughs> <laughs> like a too big a project at the time for me <laughs> getting old but i have seen like buses and then i th thought i could call it the you know bus stop book swap you know <laughs> What's that? What's that? Um, yeah um, just it is it is i mean people say oh this is a good thing that you've done or whatever and it's you know i'm not all that noble it's fun it is <laughs> it is it is fun, <laughs> fun. Yeah. Yeah. And you get to meet if you yourself are um, not able to go a lot of places or whatever, because this is great for people who have limited transportation because they can find books right in your their area. You meet people. I'll go up and I'll be filling it out and I'll find it up and I'll find out people like, um, you know, thrillers or romances, you know, or they'll say, oh, I should bring some books by and donate. Yeah. Like, it's like a whole little world. Well, it's funny. I've had people actually say to me, like, um, well, do you have any, ro you know, specifically, do you have any romance books? I said, well, you know, well, when you get some, can, I, can you let me know? How am I going to let you know? I'm like, I'm going to call you up. Or, hey, we got some romance books in. Come on down. Again. You know, but it's, but it's funny how people actually are using it almost like a real library where, yeah, I'm going to look up romance or, you know, thrillers or spy novels or, or whatever. And I mix it up. I, I mean, I have, I have nonfiction. I have fiction. I have you know picture book, little picture books for kids um, to you know middle grade readers, YA readers, and of course adult you know adult fiction and nonfiction. The other thing I I sort of regret is that I bought the sort of standard box size, which is pretty roomy, but so many of the kids books for little kids are you know large format books, and they're beautiful, beautiful books, and I've got a bunch, but I can't. You can't get him in there. I was going to say that. I <laughs> I have to find one. I have this one, um, <coughs> Zen Ties, and I absolutely love the artwork in it. Oh, okay? yeah. It's oh, all yeah. about this panda. And, but it's too big either to go sideways yeah. or this ways. Right. So that's the problem with some of – because, okay, that's the thing. I love the illustrations in that in children's literature. I don't have any little ones in my – in my um well they're not for kids i love them they're <laughs> in my oh. life oh, right. so this gives me an outlet and a reason to pick them up and and even like this one has um i'm not sure what language i haven't been able to research it oh. yet but it has beautiful pictures and there's one i realized that has a chipmunk in it because <laughs> i'm learning <laughs> like like About this, that. this chipmunk, and where are we? And so whatever country this is, it has a chipmunk. So now I have to find the language to say, oh, they have chipmunks too, because I thought it, you know, might have been more of a North American thing. So this is, it's fun. <laughs> yeah, it is. It is. You get to thrift and you get to um, bring and... Um, I think my favorite day was um, there was a knock on my door. And because, like I said, we have a lot of international students and stuff. And so I went to the door and there was a girl there and she said, is or, is that your little li library? And I said, yes. And she said, does it cost anything? And I said, no. And she said, well, do I have to have a key? And I said, no. <laughs> she said, yeah. She said, do I have to come back so you can open it from the back? no you just open it up and you take a book and she's like i said take a few if you need to <coughs> and then she was so happy and i said what kind of books do you like and she said the love stories and I said, okay <laughs> we'll see what we can do <laughs> but it, it, it was such a great encounter and to share no there are free books in the world just go out there and get them <laughs> right right and well, and so one thing for us too is, as I said, because of our our neighborhood, um, it's not so ethnically diverse as much as it's just pretty much African American mm -hmm. and some white families. So I do try to find uh, specifically, I try to find African American things. Like I have some African folk tales, and I've got a uh, biography of Harriet Tubman, and so you know, I try to get those things out there too. 
Uh, I'm sure their kids are getting some of that in schools, but probably not as much as, you know, they, they should have. So they can take these home, you know. And keep them if they like yeah. this story. I mean, that's the thing. It's like their very own book. And it is, right. I mean, one of the reasons I started was because um, – I saw kids waiting with their mom or whatever and getting fussy getting on the bus. And I thought, well, if they had a book, they could just choose a new book that was there. So it was brand new to them and they could take it on the bus. It would make a difference. It would be like an experience. Yeah. Right. And then people are like, oh, no, they'll just they'll just look on their screens. But I'm like, no, I really think there is a place for these picture books and books that are mine and I can you know go choose it physically there is like I'm a great ebook reader <laughs> that's that's because I can't have room but but for small ones I do and that sharing the parent reading the story to them on the bus I mean Maybe I'm just idealistic. I just have this whole vision that's probably never happened, John. No, I'll tell you, it does happen. When when I was growing up, when I was a little kid, I grew up in Connecticut. And I grew up in Bridgeport, which is a major city, but we lived way up called the North End, which was um, really pretty suburban and just being developed. So we didn't have, there wasn't any shopping centers up there. The, the only library in the city was downtown, which was like, eight miles away, um, we had a bus that came up. And I can remember my mother taking my brother and I on the bus to go downtown to do shopping because there was no place else to go. But every time we went, there was a department store, uh, a local department store that had a book section. Uh, you know, people can say, what's a department store? What do you mean it has a book section? But yeah, they used <laughs> to actually have a book section and, you know, whatever. But um we were always allowed to go into that book session and pick out a book. So when we came home on the bus, you know, we had a book in our hands and we were reading it, uh, you know? So, I mean, it, it does make a difference. Now we didn't have obviously phones to divert us, but I don't think I would have been diverted. I think I still would have stuck with the book like I do today. <laughs> so. Size by and, well, <clears throat> I go both ways. <laughs> But I do find that I've got I've got to go I've got to change to bifocals. That's all there is to it. I just hate that switching of of size, right? And yeah. I need. But I find that with the e-reader, I can make it big, bigger, the print, right. and it is light. And um, you can eat popcorn while you're reading without yeah. getting out of the book. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so no, I don't like getting smudge marks on on the books. Um, but I also I also enjoy real books and obviously and not real books. They're all real books. John, don't even make me go there. <laughs> but but they both have their places, and you can do both. So not getting into that debate, buddy. <laughs> no, I, well, no, I'm not. I'm not. Either. I mean, I do have it. I do look at a phone occasionally. <laughs> I do have some reason to use it sometimes. Or devices, <laughs> iPads, whatever. Yeah, no, I used to do it on my phone, but I couldn't I couldn't read anymore. So um couldn't see it anymore. So much. Yeah, but for me though, there, there's something <laughs> that that whole physical aspect Excuse of a me. book. Holding a book in my hand, turning the pages, feeling the pages. I mean, I'm the kind of guy that I look at the font. Oh, that's an interesting font. <laughs> really? Really? Yeah. Well, I mean, I'd be able to identify it, but I'll look at it. You know? uh, so I, I really like the physical nature of a book. Well, books, the love of books can go in all different directions. There is the love of the story. And there is the love of just the physical book. Like I have books I've bought because I love the old illustrations or I, you know, they were on a subject or they just looked old and nostalgic to me, which is why I had to have a little free library because, <laughs> because you know, I've, I've gotten rid of all my books way too many times um, just because they do pile up. Mm -hmm. But the, so you can love a book for many, many different reasons, not just, you know, the font that I, I like that. I like the books that have the little 
bordering across like you know with the little big or that starts with the big letters with all the leaves around it you know that kind of that kind, they can be a beautiful thing but that being said i once bought a cover at a thrift store um for my e-reader and it wasn't the right size it looked the right size but it wasn't and i thought oh for two dollars i'm not going to return this so i put that in my <laughs> free library oh, and, and and somebody took that as 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 well so i mean i think you can go like movies or or games or puzzles if you don't want to go any kind of screen you know the kids will pick them up because those are not things that the world thinks about right anymore. my my wife is uh you know she's interested in gardening a lot and that kind of stuff and she's kind of you know her books have been about culinary history you know culinary historian so she thought about the idea we haven't done it yet but we might still do it of just putting some um, seed packets yes, in the little yes. library too, and just actually, I've seen things that were actually called seed libraries. And that's all they were. It's just that. So you know, you can use it for other things as well besides just books. But you know, it's yeah. No, people have little pantries. Yeah. Little. That's what I'm saying. I I must. I, they will have to stop me at one point because I will still keep getting these little. I mean. If they're broken, like the heat or whatever's not working on them, or the fireplace light like, isn't working, you can only one's working. You can get them for like twenty to thirty dollars. So I could line up this whole roll like vending machines, <laughs> right? <laughs> and whatever. So as people walked up the sidewalk, you know, they could they could see it. But it is. So I've said, you know. You said you have most of your donation, most of your books come. How long have you had your little library? Uh, we put it up, uh, let's see, four, about four years ago, I guess. Well, let's see, COVID was, was it pre-COVID? It's about four years. Yeah. So, um, so people are, they're well aware in the neighborhood and surrounding areas that is there. So you yeah, get they books are. your books and I even, donations. I even put things up like on social media, like on Facebook. I'll take a picture of the of the box again <laughs> because it's got new books in it or whatever. And I'll say, hey, if you're in Cincinnati, you know, uh, come by. I'll put the address in. It's on the website anyway, you know. And I'll say, um, yeah, check it out. Sometimes I might highlight something like I got new kids books in or – something along those lines. So people actually sometimes even see it in social media and they'll come by based on that. I so always look on in the little window on those posts to see which one of your books. <laughs> if I can see one in there. I'm not sure on the last one. I actually stole it off your Facebook and put it on mine. Um, <laughs> for, for publicity. That's fine. Uh, um, if in the corner there's a bottle conjurer in there or it's another book. But it has the same color as the bottle conjurer is. Uh, so, it could be. I don't know. If... I don't know. I didn't see any other ones there. But it's like, a, you know, find, find the... <laughs> Find where's, the books. Those where's swine Waldo? Books. Yes. <laughs> Only it's find John's book. Where's <laughs> John? Where's Jono's books? <laughs> That's right. So you get a lot of your books through donations and things. Yeah. But I'm my stock is starting to run low. Um, you know, I've had some people say we're going to move or whatever, and I'm waiting on that. But last year I really stocked up at flea markets and things like that for garage sales, hmm. not flea markets, garage sales for the kids book and stuff. Because, you know, if you go at two o'clock when they're closing down, they don't want to bring the stuff back into the house. Right. <laughs> they will, you know, or, or sometimes, but book prices are quite high now. So a lot of even those and a lot of thrift stores reflect those prices in their prices and so i'm i'm like i don't want to go much over like these i will go on the old people's days you know <laughs> the senior discount days <laughs> i love that the mind kicked in and i did one thing is there are books you can't find so the rl stein books this is not one of the classics but it's one of the fear series so i got five of those for like a buck each which i'm willing it's a hobby and it's a treasure hunt right. and so and the books go out you know some of the kids 
someone did tell my husband they wanted Hardy Boys books. So I found some of those for those for like a buck by the time I got my discount. But the adult books are more. So I have to I have to go out. We have to go out trailing. It's such a hard thing for me to do. I'm hitting those garage sales with a mission. <laughs> okay. yeah, a mission. <laughs> Not just because I have to see what's out there on that table. So it <laughs> Well, we've been doing, you know, besides obviously people donating books to us all the time is, you know, we keep calling our own personal library and I keep stacking <laughs> books like, okay, I've read this. I don't have room. So I, mean, I got, I got stacks of books here that, you know, somebody can just come and take them all. <laughs> <You know? laughs> but I mean, I still donate a lot to the public library, you know, and they will, they have a, the Cincinnati public library has a warehouse and it's open to the public on certain days of the week where you can go in and you can buy. These are books that they pull off their shelves. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And also no. that people donate to them. Um, you can find some, you know, it's a it's a big place. You can find some interesting things. And they'll have a day where, you know, for like five bucks, you can go in and buy, a, you can fill up a bag. Whatever you can put in a big shopping bag for five bucks is yours, you know. But even the regular day, kids' books are like 50 cents and things, you know. So, from time to time, we do that, but we really have no end of inventory. inventory of, if of, you didn't live in Canada, I would ship you a box of books. But. <laughs> <laughs> I know. It's so unfortunate. I want you to I need to have a little town with all my authors around. <laughs> <laughs> authors and a coffee will. shop right in the middle. <laughs> there you go. That's right. What's that? I'd live there. Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, well, you, but you live in a place called Loveland. Like, well, not anymore. Not the, I used to. Oh, you miss? You moved? Yeah, that's north of Cincinnati by about 20 miles. Okay, so so now you're right in the city. I'm I right thought, in the city. So I the Loveland, you, Loveland frog has, has quite a way to go to reach me. Yeah, no, no. Which means, okay, and also, so let's, I've got so much on my mind. Okay, we'll see what <laughs> Robin has to say this morning. Good morning, Vicky and John. Was just wondering, John shapeshifters are mentioned all around the world and in all cu cultures. How did you manage researching? And I want to know about this too. How did you know I was thinking about that book? All this information for your book, Shapeshifters. Have you heard actual stories from people? So um, to the last question, yes. I mean, I've actually talked to people that have said they've had shape shifting, you know, shape shifter experiences where they've seen something or they know somebody that's had that. But most of my research was done two ways. I mean, one is simply a a research of the literature, you know, whatever's out there in books and in newspapers, magazines, you know, articles, things like that, websites. But also a lot of it was done on the ground. Um, the shape shifter book talks about shape shifter shape. Shifters, easy for you to say, shape shifters <laughs> all around the world. And so I did a lot of research actually in some of the countries that I visited. So Mary and I were in about, what was it, I guess like eight countries um, over a period of a couple of months in Europe primarily. Uh, and I was doing shape shifter research there. So it was like Portugal, France, Italy, um, Belarus, Ukraine, uh, Romania. So I was in all these areas visiting sites where there were supposedly, you know, historical shapeshift or events. Some places had little museums. Um, there were people there that I spoke to who knew stories locally from things that supposedly happened in that region. So it was a combination of both. I really like to do that latter kind of research more than anything, which is to go to a site if I can, whatever it is I'm researching, if I can go to that place you know, and check it out um, and talk to people out of there, local people, and, and see what was actually there myself. Actually, for the um, for the Bottle Conjurer, there's a conference in England in September sponsored by the Historical Novel Society, and I belong to that. So I'm going to go to that conference, and I'm going so to check go out all the places in London, the Haymarket and all German Street and all that stuff, and, and check it out, and, you know. Just so to be you, there, get, you know, get the sense of it. Well, because that's the kind of research you did for Ghost Hunting Ohio, right? Oh, yeah. Oh, that you was You actually all. talked to people. Yeah. That was all that way. And that's I know location. you. 
And I and I know you like to write about places that you've been to, like you've written about your area or um, <clears throat> Connecticut. You were excuse me, allergy season. Yeah. <clears throat> okay, <laughs> Connecticut or whatever. So, but I want to talk about that because we've been into wolves and shape shifting and stuff. And I was like, oh, I need to talk to John about this book, but I have to get the book and read the book before I can talk to you about it. So, but it <laughs> has recently crossed my mind because that's one I haven't, I haven't looked into yet. And Robin would like that. He's all about those things. So, and obviously looking up the authors I'm having for guests. Good for you, Robin. <laughs> Good for you. I've noticed okay. That. Oh, what was that? I said, I've noticed that. Your author <laughs> list. <laughs> okay. David, it's always a treat when a Clive Cussler or Star Wars book shows up in ours and then makes its way to my collection. <laughs> Lots of yeah. laughs. Yes, <laughs> you do get to keep. Uh, some of the books, if you like them, it, though it, it's not very many in our case because he has most of them. <laughs> so it's an odd. Um... Oh, that's an interesting question. Have you ever had any problems with vandals in your library? And no. uh, we've been lucky so far. Yeah, the answer the answer is no, and um, keep my fingers crossed. But I'm actually surprised because it's been up there, like I said now, you know, four years. Uh, we're on a street that is um, it's a residential street, but it's pretty heavily trafficked. You know, it's an urban neighborhood. Uh, we get people that live on the street, obviously, but we also get a lot of people that are sort of transient coming through and all. Um, and there's been issues of you know people checking cars at night and things like that. So. Uh, again, knock on wood, we've been fine. I think people say, what am I going to do with a book? <laughs> well, no, there's there's not much fun. It's not like glass shattering. or. But I also think right. I would like to believe that there's just something, you know, sacred about books, that they wouldn't do this, right? Yeah, that there's so that there's like this kind of this kind of feeling towards them. And I was concerned that too, because we have a very busy, um, though the neighborhood de demographic has changed a little bit. We have a very busy street and there were times that, you know, we would just get spray paint down the, my long fence just because uh, they happened to be walking by or, or whatever. Mm -hmm. And nothing, nothing with the, the library whatsoever i'm so proud of people and and um and yeah yeah and you can't let that stop you anyways you know there's dangers right. in everything um but i like think I you're right though about that kind of respect you know because um not not only my library but as i said there's a couple nearby uh and i have never seen any of those damaged or graffitied or you know anything else like that so yeah, maybe there is some respect for that. Maybe people are grateful in some way, even if they don't use it. Maybe they think, well, here's somebody trying to do something for the neighborhood, and maybe they don't, you know, feel you know, attack them. <laughs> well, the, well, that's it. Even if it's not in their interest today, it yeah. is that it's understood that it books bring knowledge, and knowledge bring brings power. I mean, that's how, that's how you get, but it's also fun. <laughs> it's fun yeah, reading. That's, that's the bottom line. I think it's fun. It's been, it's been really fun. So I had other things, but that is, we talked. Okay. So <clears throat> what I'm going to do and I'm talk to John about it. And if there's any other authors out there who would like, although I am not asking because I understand that shipping books is very, very expensive. But my library doors are open <laughs> if anybody wants to. And just give me give me a shout. Uh, for now, I'm going to put post-its in just saying that this book was donated by the author and the publisher, whoever was donating it. And that perhaps if they liked it, they could let the author know on social media or drop a review in um, Goodreads. I think I'm going to get some permanent stickers later because, you know, I want to know where these books are. I want to know. It's not like I want to know. 
And I am curious as to where they're going or whatever. So, you know, if people could let me know, um, Fiki with Fiki, if they got the book and where it's going or it, it's, it's happened to land, that is always interesting. Um, Did you over here, there's an interesting uh, add-on to what you're saying now. There was somebody who had whatever book he had, I don't know what it was, but in the back of it, he glued kind of a, a sheet of paper with lines and things on it, almost like the old library cards that used to be inserted in the back pocket, right? And he had a he had a sticker that he printed up and put it in the front somewhere, which basically said, look, this book is free to you. I want you to read it, and I want you just to sign your name and location, where you were, and the date. And then I want you to leave that book someplace for somebody else. So the first thing he did is he, you know, he had it, and I think he left it. Um, I think he left it first in an airport, in the you know airport lobby waiting area, whatever. Thousands of people coming and going, right? He left it, and at the end, I think there was. Uh, how did he know? I think, I think he had like an email address or something, and asked the last person to send him a copy or something like that. But he was able to track where this book went, and it was like all over the world. And, you know, like, I don't know, 100 people or something read it and just passed it on. So somebody would pick it up in the library and they'd be reading it uh, on the way home in the car or something. And then maybe they'd go to a grocery store and leave it on a counter or something and somebody else would pick it up again. So, yeah, no, that's I love that kind of stuff. And it brings a story, you know, I, I kind of have put on um, the Fika Facebook and that have book will travel. But how far will a book <laughs> its own travel. Yeah. I, I I got I'm gonna start working something like that stuff out because because um yeah that's all interesting it makes life fun it does it's communicating with the world with perhaps you know another means other than other than um <laughs> the way we're communicating now <laughs> <laughs> which has its good parts but but it doesn't but one of the things that um was my fears it wasn't so much vandalism but that you know i find some really good treasures <laughs> in my in my things to put out there and sometimes you would go you know on a sunday morning or whatever and all of those things would be gone so i thought oh i hope i hope kids are getting these or i hope people are getting these not they're being picked up by a used bookstore or anything. So I did see, um, and I shared with John earlier, on the Little Free Library's website, they have stamps you can purchase that's, uh, you know, from a Little Free Library, free forever or whatever. And I want to get that to put on my book. So that I don't care if it comes to mind. I don't care if you think Uncle Joe would like that book and you, and you share it with him, if it goes to other little libraries and whatever. But once people donate it to me, or I donate it, I really wouldn't like it to stay in that realm of free book. Mm -hmm. Right? So I'll get them. <laughs> yeah. right. No, no, it's not a, you know, people do what they have to do. And that's, <laughs> that's the thing. But I am, um, yeah, I have my things. So we're talking about, okay, so what is the exact name of your shapeshifter book, John? It's called Shapeshifters, A History. <laughs> okay, that was so complicated. Yeah, right. <laughs> you don't know what <laughs> allergy medication does to my mind. <laughs> so, I and it was um, nominated for a, a Bram Stoker Award from the Horror Writers Association in 2020. So it, it didn't win, but it was nominated, and that's that's pretty good because there were, I don't know, a couple hundred you know books that were in the running for that. So. so I haven't read it um, yet, so I can't make comment, but I will just ask you some questions about it and then I'll pick it up and we'll do this again sometime. Sure. Um, so you do werewolves and what kind of shapeshifters? Are yeah, you so the, the whole idea behind the book was to, um, you mentioned werewolves. We, we know werewolves, we know, dra you know vampires, those are sort of the, quintessential shapeshifters, especially werewolves, right? But what I was looking at was the the where the shapeshifter character through history and cultures. So I was looking at sort of the earliest 
kind of um, illustrations or mentions or whatever of shapeshifters, which go back to prehistoric times, you know, cave paintings. Um, but up to modern day depictions of shapeshifters in movies, in novels, you know, TV programs, whatever it might be. But I was also looking at them you know, cross-culturally. So it wasn't just in the West here thinking of werewolves. I was looking at how they show up in cultures all around the world. And it, it seems to me that almost every culture has some type of shapeshifter character in it. And I keep using the word character because it's not always a werewolf or a vampire. Um, the sheer number of types of characters just blew me away. Uh, there's, there's thousands and thousands of types of shapeshifters all around the world in different cultures. Japan alone has I don't know, a couple hundred probably, you know? So it was, it was just fascinating. It, it, so it's a little bit of, it's, well, it's a lot of folklore and, um, but it's also how they show up in mythology, how they show up in religion, how they show, even the psychology. Of how show. big is this book, John? <laughs> <laughs> well, well, so the thing was I had, that's a good question because I really had to, to winnow it down to kind of an essence. And so, um, I've gotten a little bit of criticism about like, well, you didn't go deep enough into this character or deep enough into this one. But I said, if I had to do that for every shapeshifter, I'd be on volume 90 right now trying to finish out this series of shapeshifter, you know? So, um, so it's more a broad spectrum look. Um, but yeah, the book itself is, I don't know. And, and the psychology, I'm sure a lot of it is the same for all the creatures. Like, well, I looked at, I looked at, yeah, I looked at the idea of why the psychology was more. Why is it that the shapeshifter character resonates with people in almost every culture and through time? What what is it in that character? What does it say about us? What do we get from having a shapeshifter character and writing about one and having one in movies? Um, what does that feel for us psychologically? So that was pretty interesting going down that path. Yeah. Uh, so you're quite happy with what you've done and have no desire to do anything more with that idea. Well, I, that's a good question because I've had people say specifically like with that psychology part, it's boy, that'd be an interesting book in itself. And I, I agree, but I'm, you know, I'm not a psychologist. Um, I'm just a shapeshifter, you know. I don't, um, no, no, not really. Uh, so, <laughs> I was, but, <laughs> I was just going to see. I heard it, but I was just going to see where you went with it. But where, where I'm looking at what's happened though is, uh, I've been thinking more in terms of fiction for shapeshifters now, and thinking more about. Uh, I just, in fact, I just turned in a short story that was, um, it's going to be coming out in some journal, um, that is a shapeshifter short story. So what I learned in the nonfiction research is now kind of segueing into my, into my fiction, which is good. So I'm even envisioning a novel that I'm thinking about too, about shapeshifters, but I'm writing so many other things that I don't know. Yes. Yes. And we can't get away from the other things, no matter no, how well, much new we, no, we decided to. to do. So right. um, my reason for calling you here today <laughs> So I want to know, I, I really enjoyed um, The Bottle Conjurer. And and it's funny because I interviewed another author and I was reading their book. And there was a mention of it as well as this person was staying in England. And, no <laughs> and um, yeah, and I, I, I forgot to ask her where she got it because I was just like, I didn't know this story and now it's everywhere. Okay. Well, isn't that the it's thing? <laughs> well, maybe because I'm looking at it for it. I don't know. No. Well, I tell you, I, I had never heard of it either. Um, Jack, and you know, for your audience, Jack Gallardo, my cousin and co-author, he's the one that found this thing. He was doing research on I, I don't even know what. And he just happened to come across this story about the bottle conjurer. And uh read it and realized that this was a true story. I mean, it wasn't, and he sent it to me and I thought, oh, this is incredible. And so we just started talking about it. Next thing you know, he said, you know what? There's a story behind this. So it developed from, from that. Jack is a clever man. Jack is a clever man. Yeah. 
Say hi for me and tell him I think he's clever. He you know, might be listening. I'm not sure. You, <laughs> you never know it, Jack. He might be listening. But uh, well, you know, and the thing about um, I don't know if that writer that you were talking about uh, the book that she was referencing. It'd be interesting to know if that was published in England or if the writer was English, because apparently well, the Bottle Conjurer hoax is is fairly known in England. It was a character was from Scotland in England okay. and they were, you know, visiting that area and the show was going to be put on like the the show where the bottle conjurer was going to make oh, this oh, you, and, oh, and you, so okay. they were attending. So I don't know. I don't know. I'll have to send off an email. I'll have yeah. to figure that out. I don't always remember everything I want to ask. But <laughs> but write but that, this one down because I'd like to know the name of the book and yeah, yeah. No, no. Okay, okay. I'm getting I'm getting so many orders from authors now. Okay, Vicky, I want write you to read down. this book next. Write Vicky, down, write it down. Send me now. Right now. Yes. Okay. 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 So moving on, but you're not getting so yeah. So the f book one was Stefan, and we introduced this idea. And it's a historical fantasy for anyone who wasn't here last time with us. And it gives you all the feelings of dusty theaters and old merry-go-rounds. And just even though there's not a merry-go-round, it just feels like that. <laughs> it just has that carnival, you know, that going back magical kind of thing. Magicians and wizards and all that. So to me. Okay, I don't care if John agrees. No, yeah, I, I agree with you. I'm not sure about the merry-go-round part. But I agree with you. <laughs> okay, but you know, once I get there, like I see the back of a dusty theater, and I see all these props, and for some reason, I see a carousel horse. Okay, that's fine. okay, so that's fine. So, with with the old ribbons, I shouldn't have to be explaining my my um, aesthetics. <laughs> <laughs> no, you don't. I, I, you can just tell me where to go. You don't have to explain anything. No, no, I know, I know. And and probably will someday, but you've been so nice up to this <laughs> point. <laughs> um it's it, it's a great book. So we're looking <laughs> forward to book two and for Jack and John to con complete that. So, so are we. We are <laughs> actually we, we just met this morning. We meet once a week, you know, on Zoom because Jack lives in Nevada and I'm in Ohio, so it's you know, we don't get together personally that much but um we are each writing it we have different chapters that we write different sections that we write and we get together every week and we we review it we did it this morning we are probably i would say like 75 80 percent you know through uh what will be the first draft we know where we want to go just a matter of getting the time to to write it all out but i have to say this is the second book and with a little bit of luck, we'd like to be able to see if we can get into print by the fall. That might be a little bit of a rush, but you know, it'd be nice. Or maybe by Christmas, that'd be good. It would be a nice autumn read, Christmassy read. I, yeah, I definitely oh. see it more than, you know, because it has that swirling leaves kind of feel to me. Okay. Well, this one might be <laughs> even more. There might be more twirling leaves in here. Um, <laughs> I'm not sure I like the way you went. Okay, like, okay, we'll no, just let no. her go on and she won't cause any damage. <laughs> I think there's twirling leaves mentioned on page 94, I believe. Okay. See, Talk see, and this. I haven't even read it. That's I'm right. doing well. I got good questions without having read um, <laughs> Shapeshifters. Uh, uh, yep. But yeah, we want, we want to get more into that. And so, uh, so we're looking for that next fall or winter. Okay. Well, this fall this, or winter. Yeah. Yeah. With a little bit of luck. 2024. And then, and then the third book will be completing the series. And we'll start that as soon as we begin, you know, as soon as we get the second one out. Now, uh, are you guys jotting down ideas, have sort of a, a plot outline for number three? We do. Yeah. Um, it's obviously not as fleshed out as two is because we're coming down to the wire on two. But our, our process is organic. You know, we have. We have a basic outline that we use, but as we start writing and as we start talking and bouncing ideas off each other, we say, well, you know what? Instead of this happening, what if this happened? Then it'll be a totally different direction. We'll both go, oh, yeah, that's the way to go. <laughs> you know, So we get that kind of feedback. Or it might be that's something that we had in the original outline. We say, well, I, you know, that's not really going to work now. So we pull it out. Um, the good thing is I... I've only written with a partner 
uh, nonfiction with my wife. We co-authored a nonfiction book in 1999. Other than that, it's all been my own work. So co-writing, again, is different, and especially co-writing fiction. That's much different. But I have to say that it's been, it's been a great experience. Um, I mean, Jack's been great to work with. You know, he's just, uh, he's open to ideas, you know, and, and I, and I am always careful since, you know, since I'm the guy that's written other books before, I'm always careful not to try to, this is the way it should be, Jack, you know, and hopefully. hopefully he <laughs> it's not me. awfully hard for you not to do that, John. No, well, it's really not because I do teach writing a lot, you know, <laughs> so I know when to step back. And the thing about fiction, especially any writing, but especially fiction, is it's your own world. You know, if you have a different vision about something, that's fine. And even just the basic mechanics of writing, there's there's rules, and I put those in quotes about writing. But as we know, every great writer has broken those rules, you know. And come oh, up with yeah, yeah. Rules. So it's a very subjective thing. I, there's bad writing, no, no doubt about it. And not from Jack and myself, but there is bad writing in the world. Um, but writing good writing can be done in a, in a myriad of ways, you know. Yes, and well, plus, um, he has the screenwriting experience, and we want oh, yeah. it to be made yeah. into a limited series at some point. For well, that was the whole thing, it began originally as a screenplay, and the idea was that you know, we entered it into a contest for scripts, and it, it didn't go anywhere, but we liked the idea. And then, as we were talking to, we were talking to somebody who actually read scripts for Universal um, Universal Pictures. And she said to us that, you know, she liked the story, uh, but she said that, you know, she said, you may not be aware of this, but what you see on streaming, you know, whether it's Hulu or Amazon Prime or Netflix or whatever, or what you see in the theater or on regular television, she said, most of that stuff is, is coming from novels. Right, it's right. Not, so write the novel yeah, first. Yeah, it's not originally written as, I mean, there are original screenplays and things, but the, the vast majority come from what's already out there in print. So we thought, huh, okay. Well, and <laughs> so, they are the best. They tend to be the best movies. Like I remember when my kids were little, if we went to a movie and liked it, they would say, what book is that from? Because <laughs> yeah, because that's, you know, and... And so, okay, so we'll finish the novel series and then we'll move on to the next step. That's, yeah. that's, now, you said you have a lot of writing. Is there anything going on? I mean, I still would like to see this become a series um, for for young readers. Have you considered that or are you done that? Yeah, way? well, that was the original idea with the publisher was to create a series. We didn't necessarily have a number of books in mind, like how many, but I gave him rough ideas for maybe I think another four from that. Um, I'm, I'm interested in doing more Haycorn because I like the character. Uh, I like Haycorn and I like Budge. I think they're, they're good characters and I'd like to write about them more. And it's fun for me because it's, you know, recreating my, uh, my 12 year old mayhem. You know? but, yeah. So. No. And I think it does that for all of us. It reminds us of those books. I know it sort of reminds me of like a Hardy Boys from that time or, or it just, it has a feeling. Yeah. It's just, yeah. it's just wonderful and nostalgic. And, and I love it. Even it's set in today's times and it's still quite, yeah. I don't mean to make it sound old fashioned. It's not that, but it's sort of found the, the combination between those two things. And I want to mention too, when it comes to marketing and John brought up the Frogman before <laughs> the urban legend for Loveland that in this book, Frogman is mentioned and they think that he's been created. Some people think it's been created because of the factory, the industry that was in the town before right and there's lots of lots of different opinions on frogman but i saw on his facebook page john at the pro <laughs> at the frogman festival which is the second year you said yes. this year toting his book in loveland toting his book about loveland and with the frogman mentioned in it um and you know parades pipers frog men it just it seemed incredible and i thought oh good for you that is such a wonderful place you know so <laughs> people need to find places that 
that work with their books. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Not necessarily book, sure. book festivals because there's a billion books at books festivals. Right. And I'm not saying you do that too. You're pounding the sidewalk all the time. But, um, you know, I, I expect to see you at the door someday. Like, I might be there. Hi, I'm John Ketchupa. <laughs> and this Saturday, my... I'll be at uh, Ohio Anna Book Festival in Ohio, which is in Columbus. And it's a statewide book festival. They're anticipating like 6,000 people to uh to attend so you know yeah i'm i'm always doing stuff <laughs> and and when is your trip to england just so that that's i know a, that's early september uh september well the conference is the 6th to the 8th of september it's a weekend so i'm going to be there maybe a day early and i'll probably spend another three or four days afterwards in in london and then come home oh my gosh Okay, I have to put this because this is the biggest dad joke of anything. Dave oh, just yeah, said yeah. toting his book was lost. That's actually what I thought you said. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I was saying, okay. oh, good for you, Vicky, but okay. <laughs> no, 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 no. I, I, I didn't mean that, but yeah. <laughs> because You see, because I don't have a dad sense of humor because <laughs> I'm not a dad. <laughs> So I'm not looking for those things because it's obviously now I have proof it's a thing because uh, you guys got picked that up on that. Okay. So, and also on your bottle of the bottle conjurer um, website, which is scrolling across here, but if you just search the bottle conjurer, you mm -hmm. should find the, the book site. You have a blog that has some tremendously informative articles in it. I thought they were tremendously informative anyways yeah they're they're sort of paranormal articles from around the world not that's just, most of them ghosts but not entirely uh and a lot of them i get from i've interviewed some folks who have you know allowed me to interview them for the sake of the blog well, you're pretty was, you're pretty famous out in that world like you've done some pretty big shows um, oh yeah, yeah name sure. shows and right. um and no, but that's on your regular website. But on mm -hmm. your Bottle Conjurer website, you have some historical. Right. Oh, so we just started a blog. Um, well, we, yeah. So we have a, a blog series on the Bottle Conjurer website. You're right. Called Writing Historical Fiction. And each month there's a different topic about historical fiction. Like, you know, how to develop characters, historical characters. Um, how you talk about details and things from that time period how you're accurate, how you do research. So I think we've got three three posts set up there now. And we hope people would go to it and, and read it and make comments, especially if they're interested in writing historical fiction. Um, even if you're a reader of historical fiction, you might be interested in it, but a writer especially. To see what they do. Well, you know, it's not a competitive world. Everybody's at home writing by themselves and they're lonely. <laughs> so if they can connect with somebody else in one of these blogs or whatever, yeah. aside from them being helpful. But it's, it's lovely to find groups and connections like, you know, and then start giving orders about people finding out where they got their information. <laughs> That's good. So yeah, go in there and take a look. I was, I, I did enjoy them. Um, so, and you can pick up your books at any of the major, my major sites as well as local bookstores to you. Yeah. I mean, you know, Bottle Conjure just came out. Well, kind of officially just came out in March of this year. We had kind of a soft, soft opening if you will back in november but we did the major launch just 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 this past march um you can ask for it in your local independent bookstore you may not find it but they can certainly order it for you but it is on amazon.com it's on barnesandnoble.com it's on all the uh, it, it's available through the internet for sure you know, maybe in your library too the public library yeah or you can always many libraries will let you ask for certain books oh yeah and, and you yeah, can definitely. use that power to to read what you want to read so thank you for joining us today john um jack if you're out there watching thank you <laughs> <laughs> for watching and um yeah we'll have to get together again to discuss 
these things but maybe well you have a busy you've got writing to do you've got a trip to england to go, how long are you going for just uh probably about a week so not much so, longer yeah. yeah so okay all right so you take care and thanks for thanks, joining Sophie. us and it's been it's been fun it's thank you fun, fun as always <laughs> <laughs> okay <laughs> take, take care all right always fun with john and for the rest of you i will see you all next week until then may your coffee be hot and your story sweet Thanks for listening, everyone. Welcome to Negotiating Happiness, the show that helps you find. And that was wrong. But <laughs> go check it. <clears throat> Negotiating Happiness out. Okay, here we go. Okay.